Here's my stock Commodore 64C. For this mod project, I'm going to do a few things. I'll replace the kernel ROM chip with Jiffy DOS, an improvement over the stock ROM that gives faster disk access and a DOS wedge for more convenient disk commands. I'm going to internally mount this micro IEC SD card reader. The micro IEC is a modern mass storage device for Commodore machines. In this picture, the micro IEC is shown attached to a daughter card, which allows easy external use. Once I mount it internally, the daughter card won't be needed. I got the Jiffy DOS and Micro IEC from Jim Brain at Retro Innovations. I'm not going to go into the details about the features of these in this video. There are plenty of those on the internet already. For this video, I want to demonstrate how they can be installed in a C64C. I'll also add a simple reset switch to the case. I prefer resetting the computer over doing a full power cycle. The Commodore 64 has internal reset circuitry, but it doesn't come with a reset button, so I'll add one. Finally, I'm going to give my C64C a new paint job. To begin with, after opening up the case, I determine the location for my reset button. There's just enough room at the top right position of the case next to the power cord, so that's where I'll drill the hole. And while I have the board out, I'm going to get started on the Jiffy DOS upgrade. Upgrading the kernel requires replacing the U4 chip on the board. Some boards have this chip socketed, which makes the upgrade quick and easy. But in this case, the chip is soldered directly to the board, so I have to remove the old one and socket it myself. It's a tedious task, but not too hard if you don't mind destroying the old chip in the process. I cut the old chip out, then I use the heat of the soldering iron to remove the pins, and finally, a soldering pump is used to remove the remaining solder. If you're doing this, just remember to be patient and don't be afraid to add new solder to these points and try again until everything is clear. New solder helps with heat transfer. I can now solder a socket in U4. The Jiffy DOS chip comes with a switch that allows the kernel ROM to be put back into stock mode if necessary. Although I never need to disable Jiffy DOS, I'll go ahead and make a hole to mount the switch anyway. There's a good spot at the top left of the case. As with the reset button, I have to be careful to leave room for the shield over the board. Now I'm soldering the wires for the reset switch. The easiest spot for me to do this is on the expansion port. You can find reset switch mod instructions easily enough with a web search. At this point, I want to test the Jiffy DOS chip to make sure I didn't damage anything when I removed the old kernel ROM. Everything seems to be working properly. The reset switch is also good. My next task is to mount the micro IEC SD. You can see here how the micro IEC can be used externally with the tape port daughter card. The daughter card is nice because it gives you everything you need to make it work, pulling power from the tape port and it has the control buttons on it, but as you can see, it's a pretty unwieldy piece of hardware off the back of the case. This is fine, especially if you want to be able to use it on one, more than one machine, but I want to get a more elegant solution than this. So I'll remove the daughter card and find a way to mount the reader in the C64C case directly. The micro IEC SD has pins for three control switches, as well as a reset line. Two of the control switches are for flipping through disk image playlists. As far as I could tell, the third switch doesn't presently have a function, but a firmware update in the future may change that. Finally, the reset pin can be connected to the serial reset line on the board, but I would rather have it on a switch so I can reset the reader independently of the serial bus. So I carefully measure out a place for all four buttons on the left of the case, under where the keyboard is mounted. My C64C has a so-called short board, which leaves lots of room under the keyboard for my additions. On the right side of the board, I'm adding some standoffs for the card reader. This part of the project required a lot of patience. The four holes for the standoffs needed to be as precisely placed as possible. The card reader should be flush with the inside of the case when it's mounted. I took lots of measurements and plenty of time. The metal standoffs mounted nicely, though they protruded just a bit beyond the bottom of the case. I grinded these down with a Dremel later. Cutting the slot for the card required even more patience and precise measurements. I wanted to have the slot be only as large as necessary for the card. Even with my careful measurements, it was difficult to get it just right. 
Since the Dremel cutting tool tends to melt plastic, I used a drill to cut most of the slot and finished it with a Dremel. Unfortunately, I made some mistakes in this part and grinded down a bit too much of the case, but the damage was only cosmetic. The really nice thing about using the 64C with a short board is all the extra space left under the keyboard. After I got the slot in the right place, I drilled holes for the status LEDs. They're perfectly in line with the standoffs, so that was easy enough to measure. Next comes soldering all the wires for the micro IEC. First I soldered all the ground wires which can go right under the shield. Then I added the switch lines. When I ordered my micro IEC from Retro Innovations, I added an edge connector which makes this work much easier and safer. Once the edge connector has all of the lines soldered onto it, I can just plug it right into the card reader. And finally, I soldered the wires for the serial bus and power to my board. If you're familiar with this board and have a good eye, you probably see I made a mistake here. We'll get to that in a second. And now I close everything up for a test. Everything powers on, but unfortunately it's not working. So what happened? Well, first I disconnect the micro IEC and test it in the daughter card. Thankfully, everything seems okay, so I know I didn't damage anything. The only logical answer is that I connected the serial bus incorrectly. As it turns out, I downloaded a schematic for this part that was wrong, and I didn't test it myself. The schematic I used was for someone else's project plans, and I can only assume they never actually tried it because some of the connection points were just plain wrong. So using my multi-tester, I brute force it. I have a pin assignment printout for the serial connector on the back of the board, and I find the right places to solder the lines. I make the corrections on my edge connector and I try again. I'm sorry I don't have a schematic for you to show you what worked, but the lesson here is that you should be doing that yourself anyway. It's, it's easy to get the technical manual for the Commodore 64C board and just look and see where these points are supposed to be. So I test it again. Everything works. Yay! For some people, this would be a good place to call it done, but I plan to change the color of this case, and since I made some mistakes with the Dremel, I really kind of have to do it now. So I take a couple of days to prime, paint, and clear coat the case. And here it is, C64C Gold. In the end, I'm pretty satisfied with the project. I wish I had done a better job with the Dremel, and I had a hard time getting the case badge off so it isn't quite as flat as it was before but I still think it looks pretty good. And the SD card slot right in the case feels as solid as if it was originally designed for it. And here's my other Commodore 64 a bread bin model painted red, also with Jiffy DOS. This one has a 1541 Ultimate cartridge, which is a really good mass storage option as well, but they're hard to get and would be much more difficult to mount inside the case. So I like both options. <laughs> 